Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So just a quick reminder to scan the QR code on the screens to submit your questions. And for attendees who are joining us online, please submit your questions by following the link below the live streaming video. Now, let's start with our afternoon session and welcome our presenters who are joining us virtually. Senator Mohammed Fawid is our first presenter. He's a member of the Egyptian Senate and a deputy chair for the Senate's Committee on Human Rights and Social Solidarity. Senator Farid is also a founding member of the Cairo Liberal Club. Please join me in welcoming Senator Farid. Thank you, Yomna. Um, it's, um, uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to be invited today among such distinguished line of speakers and audience. Um, today, I would like to talk to you about Egypt and try to answer the question whether uh, is freedom really important to achieve human development? Can we move to the next slide, please? Over the years uh, that covered by the Freedom and Prosperity Report, Egypt always been categorized, mostly unfree, mostly unprosperous. Even in 2011, when Egypt achieved its highest score on Freedom uh, Index, it was still mostly unfree. Uh, next slide, please. By looking at the UN Human Development Index, Egypt achieved a significant progress, going uh, from 113th in 2011 to 97 in 2021, giving such progress took place in one of the most turbulent decades for Egypt. Next, please. As on the background of a staggering population growth, adding over 20 million newborn and deteriorating infrastructure with population concentrated in less than 7% of a 1 million kilometer, which is the area of Egypt, and um, at international level, instability and civil wars in almost every neighboring country, coupled with ongoing global crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and its repercussions, supply chain disruptions, and uh, the Russian invasion to Ukraine and general tightening of, mon uh, of monetary policy having had its own impact, of course. Locally, Egypt also experienced two major uprisings, one in 2011 and another one in 2013, a war on terror and the rapid growth on population. Next, please. The government of Egypt began implementing economic reform to face these challenges back in 2014, including reducing the subsidies of fuel and redirecting the funds toward cash transfer uh, programs, which were more efficient. In 2016, Egypt so the support of the IMF, and that was probably the first time since uh, 1996 to go for the IMF, which resulted by the end of the day into a loan of 12 billion US dollars. As part of this program, uh, the government of Egypt was required to implement uh, additional uh, measures of reform, including uh, allowing the value of Egyptian pound to float in the, uh, in the market, and do some reform to the taxation system, introducing the value added tax. Parallel to that, the Egyptian government intensified uh, investment in infrastructure um, as well as social expansion, implementing major development projects, uh, whether in uh, uh, education, healthcare, housing, utilities, energy, you name it. Also expanded the uh, social protection programs in order to mitigate the impact of the reforms uh, to provide, finally, a decent life for Egyptians. Next, please. The result was a progress on several aspects. As you, see, as you can see in the table, there was, uh, despite the progress, uh, sorry, despite the uh, population growth of over 20%, 23%, there was uh, an increase in the GDP, increase in the NGI uh, per capita, so human development uh, index score went up, uh, life expectancy at birth goes up, uh, expected years of education, mean years of education, net enrollment rate, name it, there was a progress. So this leads us to a question. Next slide, please. Uh, 
whether freedom is truly necessary uh, for progress on human development. And to, be able, and to be able to answer this question, we have to examine the macroeconomic environment of Egypt and its impact on uh, human development, whether on education or healthcare or poverty. Next, please. Let's start by the macroeconomic environment. As mentioned earlier, since 2014, the uh, government of Egypt were undergone several reforms, which assisted by uh, the 12 billion loan uh, and was able to stabilize the country macroeconomy and making budget uh, primary surplus. But despite the devaluation of the Egyptian pound took place in 2016, the government maintained unrealistic exchange rates in order to help the government finance ex uh, the, its expenditure by debt. And maintaining artificial exchange rates lowered the Egyptian exports uh, competitiveness in addition to the pre-existing weaknesses of the Egyptian economy. Next, please. If you look here at the gray uh, columns, you, it's, it's representing the external debt to export ratio. In 2016, it was uh, 160%. Uh, it went up to 308% in 2021. So this can show how uh, the situation is. Next, please. And of course, that never comes uh, for free. So interest payment became the single largest expenditure item, exceeding 30% in the uh, last fiscal year and expected to exceed 40% in the upcoming fiscal year. Next, please. And in order to be able to achieve its goals, the uh, Egyptian government relied heavily on state intervention to drive growth, create jobs, expanding and strengthen uh, the state-owned enterprises. This has led to restricting the economic freedom and hindering the private sector from growth. Even before the Russian invasion took place from July 21 to February 22, the Egyptian Purchasing Manager Index for the non-oil uh, sector averaged 48.8. And if you can see um, uh, clearly the graph, you can see it had been, the private sector had been contracting uh, for years. By July 21, the situation got even worse, and uh, the uh, net uh, foreign uh, assets uh, for the banks, the net foreign position for the banks, uh, turned negative in order to uh, cover up the, uh, the demand on the foreign exchange. Next, please. Then came the Russian invasion, and it was a revealing moment for the Egyptian economy weaknesses as it brought high inflation, especially in food prices, coupled with a significant, significant exodus of approximately $21 uh, billion in portfolio investments. This led to a sudden drop in the uh, reserves of uh, foreign currency and further increased pressures on the budget. And as Margaret Thatcher once said, the problem with socialism is that you eventually run out of other people's money, and that was the case. So the government of Egypt had to take severe measures to prevent further deterioration uh, of uh, foreign currency reserves, including restrictions on imports to reduce the outflow of foreign currency. But these measures had unintended consequences and ended up creating a supply shock and disrupt the production. Because the backlog of goods worth 14 billion US dollars at ports, and this ultimately led to an increase in inflation. Next, please. Adding to that, to deal with the repercussions of the Russian invasion and the high pressure on the, uh, and demand on the uh, foreign exchange, the, uh, the government of Egypt uh, allowed another devaluation for the Egyptian pound in March with 16%, but didn't stop there. And more devaluation took place in December. And ever since there is a hemorrhage in the Egyptian pound value. Next, please. So now let's have a look at the social expenditure outcome on the um, other aspects of the human development. For education, Egypt uh, has the largest free university education system in the region with over 23 million students and over 1 million teachers. Making, uh, managing and ensure high quality of such a system is a challenge by its own. Please, next. 
And uh, despite achieving a high enrollment rate in primary schools and low dropout rates in the primary, uh, in, in the primary uh, level, the class size increased from an average 43 students in 2011 to 53 students in 2020, suggesting a decline in the quality of education. The World Bank report, Learning for Poverty, estimates that 70% of the students are not able to read and understand an age-appropriate text at the age of 10. It's worth mentioning that in the year 2020, the average class size in all education levels in public schools was 48.3 students, but in private schools, it was 33.8 students. Next. Looking at healthcare, the uh, government of Egypt achieved a significant improvement in healthcare, increased the uh, life ex expectancy, uh, reduced uh, the uh, under five child mortality rate and combat uh, combated the uh, prevailing stunning and wasting uh, among the children. Also, uh, the ratio of doctors to uh, 10,000 inhabitants increased, but next, please. Looking at the investments in the healthcare system and look at the number of beds at uh, the hospitals in private sector and in public sector. On the left, you can see there is a decline on the number of beds in public, uh, public sector hospitals, while there is an increase in the private sector hospitals. Same goes to the number of doctors and physicians working in the public sector. There is a decline and there is an increase in the private sector. Next, please. Poverty. Since the uh, beginning of the century in uh, the year 20, uh, in the year 2000, uh, there was an increase in poverty uh, rates, reaching its peak in 2018 with uh, almost 37%, and it went down to almost uh, 30% in 2090. And looking at uh, the, the status of the, uh, of the households, you can see that transfers, whether cash or in kind to present, 23.7 of the national average household income. It comes as the second largest uh, item after wages. Next, please. And now let's look, have a look at the uh, expenditure of the families. Over 30% of the household expenditure goes to food, yet uh, subsidy, food subsidies make up to 7.4% uh, of total uh, household food consumption. And it reaches 12%, 12 almost 12% 12 uh, for the uh, lowest income households. For healthcare, half of the healthcare uh, expenditure goes to medication, and the percentage increased to reach almost 60% in the uh, poorest households. Yet, expenditure on health services uh, is 12.2% at the poorest and goes to 26% for the uh, highest income. And this shows. Another problem when it comes to uh, access for the healthcare services because poor households go to pharmacies asking for diagnosis and medication. Of course, this uh, this take place with uh, for with people who have limited or non uh, medical training. Expenditure on education is also one important sign because uh, in the rural areas, 60, uh, 36 percent uh, of uh, expenditure on education go to private uh, tuition. And uh, this shows uh, a clear sign of the poor quality of education. Next, please. So the government policies uh, and intervention and heavy investment in non-tradable activities and uh, infrastructure had led to some improvements in standards of living and better ranking on human development in the exports. But as, uh, we, we've been discussing the progress remain modest. Despite the improvements, uh, the quality of services remain poor and there are barriers to access uh, these services. History and research give us a very important lesson that economic and political freedoms are prerequisite to achieve better human development. It's no surprise that countries that are on the top of human development index are also the countries on the top of the freedom of uh, and prosperity indexes. Therefore, for Egypt to overcome its structural distortions and the tremendous challenges of reducing poverty and improve uh, standards of living, this should be 
a well-defined limited role uh, for, this, for the state uh, intervention in the economy or in the economy in general, and improved governance and uh, more efficient allocation of public resources. This will enable the growth of uh, private sector, which uh, will create more jobs and generate more revenue, allowing the development of healthy and skilled workers and more stable economic environment that is less vulnerable to external shocks and crises. Thank you.